Well, hi, hello, and welcome to this video where today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the seven steps you can take to quit that job and go full-time as an artist. Now, if this is something that you really want to achieve, I'm gonna suggest you stay right to the end because I'm gonna share a whopping mistake that I made and I'm gonna make sure that you don't make that mistake as well. So all this is part of what we teach in our Art Business Academy monthly membership, which you can find out more details about below this video. Hey, if you're new to this channel, a warm welcome. I'm Sophie Mejia and I help female artists to make a living from their art or creativity by building a stable, profitable business doing what they love. And on this channel, I share all things, tips and tricks, art business related. So if that's what you need, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. All right, so let's go ahead and look at these seven steps that you need to take if you want to quit your job and go full-time as an artist. So, step number one, this might sound obvious, but sometimes people don't do it, and that is plan well ahead. So for example, if you're in a full-time job, you might want to start by just simply reducing down the days. You know, five days to four to three to two. I actually went to two and a half when I left my job. So I started my business on two and a half days and I still worked in my, uh, in my teaching job for two and a half days as well. And there's something about having that short little period of time that really meant that was very, very laser focused on the time I did have. But preparation is key. What you don't wanna be doing is saying, oh, I think next week I'm just gonna leave my job and give it a go. All right, step number two, and this is super, super important and so many people don't do this. <laughs> Um, and that is to have at least 12 months income put aside or an income source that will, that will cover you for at least the first 12 months of starting up your business. You know, they often say that when you start a business, in year one you make a loss, year two you break even, and year three you make a profit. So if we know that, the last thing you want to do is make a leap from your job and say, I'm going full-time artist, and then have to really struggle and not be able to do the things you need to do because you're in that scarcity or lack or trying desperately to sell. And that's not the place that we want you to be in. We need you to be in a space of, okay, I've got 12 months to really get this business going. What do I need to prioritize and what do I need to be doing first? Now, where you get that income from is of course up to you. Some people will take a loan. Some people will perhaps draw some equity out of if they've got a property. Some people will, will use savings or redundancy pay. Um, and other people have perhaps you've already got another income source. So whatever it is for you, just make sure that you can live comfortably for 12 months while you're starting up your business. Step three, you need to have your artist's business plan fully filled out. There's no way around it. This is your live document that's going to help you to make choices to determine what you're gonna focus on first, what you can do later, what you're going to be selling, at what price point are you gonna be selling, where are you gonna be selling it, and of course, to whom are you gonna be selling it? There's a lot of different components to a good business plan, and although it might not seem like the most exciting place to start, I promise you, you're gonna thank me later on because fully filling out your own artist's business plan is giving you your own personal roadmap to success. And again, this is core to what we teach in everything that we do, and particularly in our Art Business Academy membership. Step number four, you need to develop your key product or service that you're going to start selling with. So. You know, for example, if you are, like myself, a painter, then you want to create a collection of artwork that you would be happy to set out into the world. It's one thing to be developing your creative practice, which I really suggest you do every day, and I've got a video on how you can be doing that, but it's a whole other actually to create a body of work that you put together that make it ready to sell. So that would be your first product. So you want to take the time to do that first, all right? before you start going out and saying, oh, I've got one painting for sale. You want to make, build a collection. And it depends on what you're doing, of course. If you're a teacher and, and you want to create workshops or online courses, then ideally you want to have really worked out what's the key thing I'm, I'm wanting to actually sell here. And you might even try or run it. You know, you need to make sure that when you start this business, you've got a good quality product or service. Now, Here's the caveat to that. As creatives, are we ever happy with what we produce? 
Probably not. And we all know that we're going to be selling things that we look at and go, oh, I could do it better now, or you know, I want to do something different with it. But that's part of that's part of who we are. You still need to make sure that whatever you're going to sell, you are happy with at this point. Even if you know six months down the line you will create something different, or perhaps you will have improved on that. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. That's great. Step number five is develop feedback on your product or service. And this piece I find gets skipped quite a lot. Now it could be as simple as you've made something that you take to an art fair or a craft fair or a local market that doesn't cost you too much time, doesn't cost you too much outlay, and you can talk to people as they come and look at that product. And you can ask them and say, hey, this is a new thing, I'm the new range of X, Y, and Z that I'm thinking of offering. You know, is it something you would buy? And just getting uh, some feedback from people and just see if they're looking at it and going, oh, you know, I'd really like one of those, or whether they're looking at it with that sort of, hmm, no, not really, and move on by. And sometimes people will give you open, honest feedback. They might say, oh, I really like that, but I wouldn't buy it at that price point, or that seems a little low, maybe you could rise, raise the prices, or I'd buy that, but not if it was in blue. <laughs> okay, you need to get feedback. If you're going to be teaching, you need to set up and run a simple workshop and get some friends, relatives, anybody you can drag in off the street to go through that and give you honest feedback. Because what you don't want to be doing if you've never taught before is running a workshop that you're going to ask people to pay to join if you haven't practiced a few times. So you need feedback. Feedback is going to be the most important thing. And you might then need to go back into that business plan and make some alterations based on the feedback. Now this is standard practice in any business. Why is it that creatives don't do that? And they spend hours making something and then want to sell it to their desired audience and the audience doesn't really want it because they haven't done the feedback piece. All right, so do that. Um, as your next step, and that's your step number five. All right, once you've had some feedback and you know that what you've got is, is you're happy with, you've got some perhaps some suggestions on price point or packaging or selling, or you've got some new ideas, perhaps you've delivered a workshop and you've got some great feedback, it was too long, too short, started at the wrong time of the day, wrong time of the week, you know, had more of this and less of that, and you've ad adapted and you've changed and you've got your product or service the way you want it, now you're ready to set up where you're actually going to be selling it from. So you're creating your sales platform. So the next thing would be to find the first place that you're going to sell whatever it is you offer from. And by the way, that's not necessarily your website out of the gate, all right? There are lots of other online sales platforms that you can use. And again, I've got a training coming up on how to sell your work online. So look out for the details below this video because that's an hour long training helping you on exactly what you need to do to be successful selling online. So step number seven, you've guessed it, pick a date, stick to it and officially launch your business. This is an opportunity to have a little bit of a party, whether that's online or offline, and let people know that you are now ready, your doors are open and you're ready for people to make that first purchase. This is something to really celebrate, all right? You don't want to just say, oh, okay, it's the first of January, um, I'm now starting my art business. Let everybody know that you're starting your art business and be very celebratory with it. And also a pat on the back for you as well because the preparation that goes into it, I know is hard work and you'll be doing things that are uncomfortable and you're not sure about. But I promise you, when you do open your doors, whether they are online doors or offline doors, you're gonna be so excited that you made that decision to leave that day job and actually go out into the world as a professional artist. I promised you the huge mistake that I made when I very first started out as an artist, and here it is. I think I was a little cocky, and I left my job, um, and I didn't fully create that business plan. I remember having three months of plan ahead. Um, I worked out some of the core basics, and I just pushed the business plan document to the side, and I think I said something like, I'll look at that later. I've got enough to be going on with. And whilst those first three months were pretty good, there was a bit of a scramble and a panic. 
after that because of course I hadn't looked ahead, I hadn't actually planned, I started to really sell in those first three months and I had that other problem of, oh my goodness me, now what, what's happening? And I was very busy and the whole thing was put together in a really un ungainly fashion and it's not the way that I would like for you to run your business. Now all you need to do is take the time to complete it. Now we know that a business plan is a working document, so it's absolutely fine to be to get that moving as you go forward, but you need to fill it all out at the at the get-go, from the get-go. And I didn't. As I say, I was a bit like, oh it's alright, I'll just work out what I'm doing for the next three months and I'll fill out the business plan later. It didn't really work for me. Like I say, it was very stressful the months after that until I got things back on an even keel again. Now, all of this, uh, everything that I've spoken about today is content that sits within our Art Business Academy membership. And if that's something that you are at all interested in, then there's information below this video. We have the doors open for the Art Business Academy for a very short period of time, and you have the opportunity to join right now. If you're watching this video at a later date, there will be a wait list. You'll be able to get on the wait list, and I promise you, as soon as the doors are about to open again, you will be the very first person to know. But as I say, at the moment, our doors are open. It's exciting. We are celebrating. A bit like what I said to you earlier in step number seven, that you'll be doing the same. All right, I hope you've enjoyed the content of this video, and I hope that it's inspired you to know that there are some clear steps that you can take if you're sitting there really wanting to quit that day job and wanting to be a full-time professional artist. It's the best decision I ever made and I hope it's the best decision that you will make as well. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.